Okay, so um, everything I'm going to talk about is joint work with Duzon Park and Polarne. Um, you can read uh, most of the things I'm going to say in our print on the archive. So as Frederick said, I'm going to say something about motives for logarithmic schemes over a field. So first question is why, well, why motives and log schemes together? So why, why do we want to put these two uh, theories in, in, in one? And of course, one lame answer would be, well, because why not? And I'm, well, what I'm going to do in this talk is try to convince you that, uh, well, there is a, a better argument for it, okay? So there are actually good, good reasons for trying to uh, include some ideas from log geometry into the theory of motives. So before that, let me start with a very quick recollection on logarithmic geometry, okay? So this is a very like uh, elementary thing. So I I'm, I'm apologize for to the experts, but the main idea in, in log geometry is uh, like that we want to have a tool for studying the analog of uh, manifolds uh, with boundary. in algebraic geometry, okay? So the setting that I have in mind is that we fix a field K and we have a scheme S over, over K and we fix some open embedding of S into some something called S bar, okay? Typically the S bar will be proper, but not necessarily. And we want to do it in a way to keep track of a geometry of S in doing so. So of course, um, let me like, uh, discuss this baby example. So one can start with something like C minus zero, so GM, and then uh, put it inside C. That's a perfectly valid uh, partial compactification of C minus zero, so locally. And of course, this is a, not so great because this changes the homotopy type. Right, so we, we um, pass from something which has the homotopy type of S1 to, to something which is simply connected. So that's not what log geometry does. Instead, one builds uh, the so-called Kato Nakayama space. So this is the real blow up um, at zero in C. Um, so how does it look like? So you start from, as you can see in the picture, you start from like C minus zero, you have your, your point, and, and then you attach an S1, okay? Like, like you do for a blow up your exceptional divisor and the setting is gonna be like a, a circle, okay? So in this way, you get something which is locally like a manifold with boundary, and it doesn't change the homotopy type. So that's more or less the, the idea we want, to, we want to use in, in algebraic geometry as well. So what's the main source of, um, log schemes for us. Well, um, I'm going to uh, talk about, oh, I see that you can't really see that I switched slide. Hmm. Can you see? Oh, okay, good. So the basic source of log schemes is uh, called SNCD compactifications. So we start from uh, smooth scheme X and we consider an open embedding into X bar. Uh, you can make X bar normal. And in an ideal world, you, can, you could uh, make X bar smooth. So for example, if you are over C and if you have, or if you have resolution of singularities and you want to make this compactification as nice as possible. And in algebraic geometry, this means that the complement, so this guy here, X bar minus X is gonna be a divisor, actually a strict normal crossing divisor on X bar, okay? It means that each reducible component, the I of D, so if I write uh, like this, so my D, as some of the components di, then each component di is actually smooth and intersects uh, transversely with the other components. Okay, so in coordinates, uh, let me give this, uh, this example in a bit more detail. So let's pick a point x in, in the support of this, of this divisor. So um, the picture you have one point and then two components passing through it. And you can, uh, let's assume that X bar is also smooth over K, okay? So that I, can, I can choose local parameters, say T1, Td, uh, D is the dimension. And my divisor big D is a zero locus of say R of N, okay? T1, Tr. Then, and here is where the log structure comes in, okay? You can define this map. 
So this is a morphism of monoids, okay? So you have a monoid N to the R and you map to the multiplicative monoid of OX bar. So you send A1, AR to T1 to the A1, TR to the AR. Okay, and then you can, um, you can build a logarithmic scheme out, a scheme out of this, so which is essentially the datum of, well, an underlying scheme plus uh, a sheaf of monoids uh, like this one. Okay, so it's a bit more complicated than this, but it's enough to, I think this is enough for having an idea. So the, this kind of logarithmic structures are sometimes called the lean Faltings log structure, so DF. This is at least the name used in uh, August's book on log geometry. And the pair, Y, so will be the datum of this X bar and our divisor D, will produce in a, in a natural way a logarithmic scheme. Okay? And then we will call uh, this X bar will be the underlying scheme of a log scheme. Okay, so this is just to introduce a bit of notation. Okay, so, so far so good. And let me continue. So of course, um, a very natural question is uh, how does this uh, thing depend on the choice of a compactification? Okay, M many compactifications are obviously possible and I would like to stress one specific source of examples of different kinds of compactifications. So let's see again what we, the, the, what we had in the previous slide. So we have our variety X bar and a point in the boundary. So this uh, sitting in, in D1 and D2. And of course, what you can do is you can blow up this uh, variety X bar at the point little x. So the, the picture in the blow up will look like this. So we will have D1, D2 tilde the strict transforms of the original components of a divisor. And then you have yet another component, let's call it E, and this is our exceptional divisor. Okay, of course, uh, since X was sitting inside X bar as an, open, um, as an open guy, and we are blowing up something away from the boundary, this uh, both Y and Y prime are equally valid compactifications a priori of X, and there is no, well, there's no uniqueness whatsoever. Okay. On the other hand, let me stress that uh, one very special uh, thing happens if you study this map. So for example, let's look at the uh, so-called log differential forms. So omega i of y. So this is the differential forms on x bar. So we uh, with logarithmic poles on along d. So this is a pretty uh, familiar object. And you can compare it with a pullback map like you can pull back log forms um, along pi. So you have a natural map to this pi lower star of the omega i uh, of a blow up. We have log poles on the total transform, so d tilde plus e. And well, you can show that this map is actually an isomorphism, okay? So uh, one way to phrase this fact is that in, in, on the eyes of log geometry, uh, the map pi is an etal map. So it's something called log etal. So, and, and then as it usually happens for etal maps, you don't see a difference in the differentials. So maybe what this is suggesting us is that we should not uh, distinguish. Between y and y prime. And this idea will, will be used again later in the talk. Okay, and we have just like, see that this is part of a magic of log geometry. So if we put a log structure, uh, like some, uh, there's a question by Kirsten, what the log pool is F prime or, yes, so this is generated. Okay, so uh, log poles is like, okay, so Kirsten to answer to your question. So suppose that I have uh, parameters say T1, TD, and uh, as in the previous slide, so D is given by, okay, so in the, say just T1, T2, then you have something like D, T1 over T1, and D, T2 over T2, and so on, okay? Is it okay, Kirsten? Good, well, just continue. So, uh, okay, great. Okay, so what I was saying is that the magical of geometry is exactly that this kind of thing uh, behaves like an etal map. 
Okay, so this is not even flat, so that's quite um, quite quite cool. Okay, so some singular things behave like they were smooth. And so on. Okay, but what has this to do with motives? Okay, so in order to answer to this question, let me quickly review what I mean by motive. And I'm sure that this is absolutely well known in, uh, in, in this conference. So for us, motives are uh, motivic complexes in the sense of Wojewodski, Morel, Yub, and Sinski de Glees. So uh, the categories we will focus on are uh, DM or DA. So the construction is, uh, is well known. So is a, is a localization in your favorite way. So either as a translated localization, as a localization in terms of model categories, infinity categories, whatever, of uh, the category of sheaves with or without transfers on the, say, Risky or Niznevich or et al. site on smooth schemes over K with coefficients in lambda. Lambda is some coefficient ring. So what you do is you localize with respect to, to A1 and, uh, and according to uh, whether you have transfers or not, then the resulting category will be denoted DA effective for topology tau or DM effective for topology tau. Okay, so uh, for us, the focus in this talk will be on the Niznevich or the et al. Uh, side because something uh, specific happens in the et al. setting and I would like to, that I would like to stress. So of course, the basic input is A1 invariance. Okay, in the localization, we, uh, we impose that this is satisfied. Okay, and this is great, yay. As we all know, but it has some disadvantages right? I would like to, that I would like to stress. Okay, and, and uh, hopefully this uh, list of disadvantages will be a source of motivation for why we might uh, be helped by, by log geometry in this. Okay, so that's uh, maybe the motivational part of the talk. So um, hopefully we'll partially answer to the original, original question. So of course the, the comment is that not every invariant that we care about is insensitive to the affine line. Okay, so uh, I think in the summer school there was already um, a comment about this at some point during, um, I think, Tabada series of lectures, but and let me just spell this out. So you have, of course, the first invariant that what you want to, might want to, to, to look at is the additive group, GA, as a sheaf on the big side. And clearly, um, GA is not insensitive to the affine line. I mean, the, the global sections of GA on A1 is just K of X. And that's clearly not the same as the global sections of J on spec of K. So that's, that's easy. And, uh, and then you have all the relatives of J, right? So all these coherent guys or things which have a filtration by coherent guys or graded pieces by coherent guys better. So omega J, uh, so the differentials over K or the absolute differentials over Z. And then you have the Durham um, bit version. So Hodge bit sheaves either over K or over Z, and, and these are all well-known examples of known A1 invariant uh, sheaves, okay? So um, in the ram with case, then uh, you can also see that, uh, for example, that a crystalline cohomology is not uh, A1 homotopy invariant, okay? And this is, comes from, um, well, computations with the ram bit complex. Um, well, or direct computation, actually. It's both things are non-trivial on A1. Okay, so um, let me also stress something very specific about the et al topology. So if you are in positive characteristic and then if you happen to be interested in Z mod P to the R coefficients, then uh, you can look at the Artin Shire sequence. So this is the uh, well-known exact sequence in the et al setting. It's not exact in the Niznevich setting. So the, this is a very typical et al uh, problem. And of course, the fact that this is exact and the fact that GA, which is represented by A1, is contractible in motivic categories is, has a very sad consequence, namely that the category DM et al 
with Z mod P coefficients agrees with DA et al with Z mod P coefficients and is a very boring category, right? Because if you are, you, you put Z mod P in the coefficients and Z mod P is just zero here. Okay, too bad. So there is, uh, well, this sort of thing, no, there is no hope. Uh, so, and the question is what, what are et al motives with uh, say Z mod P to the R coefficients in positive characteristic. Okay, so of course uh, you have to figure out something which is not uh, contracting A1 because this would sort of uh, kill everything you're interested in. Okay, so how does uh, logarithmic geometry help in this? Well, let's see. So um, the way I presented log geometry is a systematic tool for studying compactification. Okay, so in the eyes of logarithmic geometry, then maybe A1 is not really the, the right thing to, to look at, but you can look at the, at the compactification of, of A1. Well, you get P1, that's a unique compactification in, the case, in this case, fine. So you have a, you have a boundary, let's call it uh, infinity. Mm -hmm. And then this gives rise to a very simple logarithmic schemes. Okay? And then I will denote this uh, guy uh, alternately with P1 comma infinity or this annoying notation box one, okay, that, that is used in the theory of motives with modulus, okay, for those who know about these things. Okay, so the idea is that we could try to use P1 infinity now seen as a log scheme instead of A1 to build a meaningful category of motives, okay? So why is P1 infinity uh, something uh, sort of reasonable to, to, to use. Let, let's, let's look again at the uh, complex realization of this guy. So if you, if you are over the complex numbers, for example, um, you can look at the Kato Nakayama space associated to uh, P1 minus infinity. So um, it looks like this, okay? So I hope you can, you can see my picture. So you have, uh, of course, the realization of, uh, of P1, you remove a point at infinity, and you attach an S1, so that's your real blow up. And that's, this, this has the homotopy type of, well, it's homomorphic to uh, the zero times one times zero, time, zero one times zero one, okay? As a, uh, zero one is a closed interval. So, well, this is a, something that you can use to parameterize homotopies, okay? So the closed interval zero one is as good as the open interval zero one to parameterize homotopies. So it's not so, such a crazy idea, okay? So if you, what I'm saying is that if you uh, build a reasonable complex realization, um, then this thing will be contractible, okay? And that's something that we, we also wanted from, from A1. And something that you don't have if you, if you, for example, try to contract P1, okay? Good, so um, then we have this guy, P1 infinity, is uh, an object in this category here, that we, I denote log smooth over K. So this is a category of log smooth um, okay, so for the experts, these are fine and saturated log schemes over K, so we don't really need to get into the details. And the main source of uh, examples for, uh, of objects in this category uh, are, are things like this, okay? So X bar D in a previous slide. Okay, so um, and a comment for the experts. So I'm not putting any log structure on the base. So I'm, I'm considering K, uh, spec K with trivial log structure. And then, so my, uh, in some sense, my log structures will be um, horizontal, okay? So I will only consider things like compactifications of uh, smooth, uh, smooth varieties. So I have uh, uh, an adjunction. Yes. There's just a question about uh, someone asking, is there a book of our series of papers that explains the background on lock schemes? Mm, yeah, you... there is. <laughs> so, um, of course, there is a book by Arthur August. Uh, I think it's Lectures on Logarithmic Geometry. I don't remember the exact title, but uh, yeah. So there is everything you want to, you want to know about log geometry and you never dared asking, okay? 
Um, August lectures on logarithmic algebra. Yes, yes, okay. So I see that the other panelists are providing tons of examples. Yes, okay. So my reference is, is uh, August book, of course. Okay. Um, right, so, okay, so let's see. Uh, let's go back to, to my example. So I, I, I have this junction, okay, between uh, smooth schemes and, uh, and log schemes in this, uh, in this setting. So, of course, you can uh, start from uh, any smooth scheme and uh, you consider it with, um, with a trivial log structure. So you can just see it as a log scheme. It's a harmless operation, okay? And on the other hand, you can uh, start from a log scheme Y and you can produce out of it uh, a scheme. How do you do this? Well, um, uh, essentially you have to, okay. So I, I think the, 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 the best way to explain it is uh, keeping this analogy of log schemes as being compactifications of things, okay? So if you imagine that a log scheme is essentially the datum of uh, like a, a chosen compactification of a scheme, then you could just forget the boundary and you get back a scheme, okay? So that's more or less what you do. So you have to uh, look at the points of your log scheme Y where the log structure is not trivial. So this would be the boundary, okay? So in our previous example is exactly this divisor D that I, that I was drawing and, and uh, you take it out and you get something which is open in, in Y and is a, is a log scheme with trivial log structure now. And so it's just a scheme. Okay, so I hope this is uh, clear, but please ask if you need more, uh, need more details about it. But I think it's more or less enough to, at least to get an idea of what's going on. Okay, so uh, what I want to do now is to build an analogy between the construction of Wojewalski and uh, and the word of log geometry, okay? So I've already told you what's, what we are going to use as a replacement for uh, the affine line. And also um, what we are going to use as a replacement for our category of uh, varieties. So will be log smooth schemes instead of smooth schemes. But I still have to uh, say a few, few more things um, for being able to talk about motives. So this is, uh, my table, okay? So on the left side, I have uh, what happens in the realm of algebraic geometry. And on the right side, I have what happens in the realm of log algebraic geometry. Okay, so uh, first of all, what is our base? Okay, so the base will be uh, a field in, or any reasonable scheme, actually, if you want to do algebraic geometry. And in the log setting, as I said before, we are, uh, at least for now, Let's uh, confine ourselves in the case, to the case where uh, we have K, again, a field with trivial log structure, okay? Then, so let's just forget about it, okay? So it's just a field. So then, um, okay, so we have the categories of, of varieties and, uh, and in order to construct a DM, we built a category of finite correspondences or rather Susan and Wojewalski did. And we are gonna generalize this notion to the notion of log correspondences. So we'll, there will be a new category in the picture. So I told you already what's the replacement for A1 as an interval object. So is uh, this, this guy P1 pointed at infinity with its natural log structure. And what about the topology? Okay, so uh, in, in for, for motives, you can use either the Zriski or the Niznevich or the et al topology. And, um, in our log setting, we are going to introduce new topologies. So these are called the dividing topologies. Okay, so dividing Niznevich or et al or whatever. It will be something also called log et al topologies on log schemes. So um, I need to explain these two parts, okay? So some, I have to say something about correspondences and uh, I really need to say something about this, uh, this topology. So let me start from this, okay? Um, first of all, let's start with a quick reminder of an Isnevich topology on smooth schemes. So, uh, well, we know what this is. So it's, uh, it's a CD topology. So it's a topology associated with a CD structure and is generated by 
so-called elementary Nisnevich squares, okay, like this, okay, so you have uh, an open embedding and a tall map, and then you have the isomorphism on the reduced uh, complements of this. And this works perfectly well, but of course, what should we do if now we assume that our X has, some, uh, has a log structure? So again, uh, let's pretend that this, we are in this setting so that this um, uh, X is actually given as, as it is written here in the slides. So by some uh, X overline and some D, Okay, so D is a strict normal crossing divisor in X uh, overline. And uh, um, well, we, are, we, we should try to promote the topology from smooth schemes over K to log, log schemes. So what should we do? Well, the first attempt is that, well, let's just take these energy squares of the underlying schemes and put the induced log structure on uh, say u and v, okay? So u and v are just schemes now. They don't have any log structure. We, we have an open embedding inside x uh, underline, the underlying guy, and the tal map from v to the underlying guy. And let's just say that we can, let's just put a log, an induced log structure on this. So what do I mean by this? Uh, so if u is, a, is open inside this x overline, this x bar, Okay, then uh, what we can, we can just restrict this uh, Cartier divisor, this normal crossing divisor to U. Well, this will produce another log scheme. That's, that's easy, right? I mean, you have, a, you have a Cartier divisor, you intersect with an open guy and well, that's it. Or if you have an etal map, uh, say F from V to X bar, you can just pull back your uh, normal crossing divisor. You will get a divisor on V and Again, this will produce uh, a nice uh, log scheme in the same way as I, as I explained before, okay? So the, this works, okay? So this produces a topology and maybe a bit naive, but it's, let's call it, let's give a name to it. Let's call it strict Nisnevich topology. Okay. And of course you can imagine that you can vary this construction a bit. Instead of starting from an Isnevich squares, you can start from uh, the risky cover, and then you get the strict the risky topology and, uh, and, and so on, okay? So that's a perfectly valid uh, topology on log schemes, but it's not quite fine enough right, for our purposes, okay? So, uh, let's consider again the example that I was stressing at the beginning of my, of my lecture of, um, of the change of a compactification, okay? So suppose that you have, that our log scheme is this guy, X bar, so it's a, it's a nice smooth scheme equipped with a, with a divisor, say D1 plus D2, and we pick up a point in the intersection and we, uh, we blow up the, we blow up the point, okay? So as I, as I said before, the morphisms like pi are log et al. So they don't change the differentials, even though they are not even flat as morphism of uh, the under, of underlying schemes. And uh, um, we want to give a different name to this, to these maps, let's call them dividing covers. Okay, we're Can back. Can you see, we are back? Okay. Yeah, so everything is fine, good. Okay, good. So, uh, so let me just continue. Where is where I stopped? So, um, right. So I don't know where you lost my uh, connection. Anyway, so I was saying that these maps are called dividing covers uh, in our paper, and this is sort of inspired by what happens in in toric geometry. So, if you well, um, say there is a, an operation called star subdivision and uh, and uh, of monoids and uh, um, well, the corresponding maps in algebraic geometry, they, all, they look like this, okay? So they all look like blow-ups uh, along special centers. Uh, for example, you're allowed to blow up things like the intersection of D1 and D2, but you're not allowed to blow up a point in D1 away from the intersection uh, within the other component of a divisor. Okay, anyway, so this uh, actually turns out to be uh, something that you can do, so is a, you can, Define a topology if you put together dividing covers uh, 
and strict Nisnevich maps. Covers uh, that I discussed in the previous slide. And the resulting uh, topology is called the dividing Nisnevich topology. Okay, and let's call it D knees and symbols. So, um, so what is the idea behind this? So that we dividing Nisnevich locally, we are allowed to blow up along nice centers in the boundary of our logarithmic schemes. Okay. So it's uh, well, uh, that's what we are going to to to, uh, to do, and and somehow we are justified in this because if we are if our goal is to represent in a new category of motives things like uh, differentials and, uh, and like Hodge differentials or Hodge sheaves or Hodge sheaves, then we have already uh, seen that these things they tend to be pretty invariant to this kind of uh, maps. So that that's okay. All right, so let me now say something about um, finite log correspondences. So the category of smooth schemes over K is embedded in the category of finite correspondences introduced by Suslin and Wojewodski. So finite correspondences. And that's building block for DM, okay? So um, how do we generalize this notion to the case of log geometry? So let's take X and Y logs, log schemes, uh, logs move over K, and let's give a bit piece of notation. So if I write X zero as the complement of uh, the boundary, okay? So X minus boundary of X, and let's write Y zero as Y minus the boundary of Y. So as I was explaining before, you have an open embedding into into X and into Y. So if you, for example, of the underlying schemes. And uh, what, what is the correspondence in, the, in our log word between X and Y? So first of all, we start from an integral uh, finite correspondence in the usual sense. So we start from some W0, which is closed in X0 times Y0, and is finite and surjective over say a component of x0 okay so w0 is an uh, element of usual correspondences between finite correspondences between x0 and y0 okay so how do we promote this to a uh, to a log thing well let's uh, first of all consider the closure of w0 in the product of the underlying scheme say x and y okay and let's assume that this is also stays finite and surjective over, over X, okay? Um, this might seem like a very restrictive condition, but let's just bear with me, okay? And then we do something slightly technical. So we, we look at the normalization of this uh, disclosure and uh, you look at the composite, so W0N to Y, okay? And we assume that this gives rise to a morphism in the category of log scheme, okay? Where we equip W0N with a log structure induced from X. So again, in the, uh, in the baby example where all these log schemes are just schemes equipped with a with boundary, uh, like, like a normal crossing divisor, what we do is if we pull back the divisor from X to this W0N, and, and then we have a divisor there, we have a divisor on Y with a map and we compare the two divisors, okay? So, and if there is a reasonable compatibility, I mean, I can get into the details if there are questions, otherwise I will just swap this under the carpet, then we say that there is an admissible morphism, okay? And uh, so the, the upshot is that we can define a subgroup of a group of finite correspondences between X0 and Y0, so it's some condition, okay? It's a slightly restrictive condition, okay? Not every correspondence between X0 and Y0 extends to a correspondence in our sense between X and Y. Okay, and but anyway, you can you can you can do this. And uh, this produces easily an embedding of a category of log smooth schemes into the category of log correspondences. You can actually show that whatever this thing is, our core, then gives rise to a meaningful category. So you can compose them. Okay? And the composition is induced by the composition of the uh, underlying correspondences between the open complements of the boundary. 
Okay, Federico, I, I missed yes. a question uh, about uh, topology. Yeah. So the yes. question is, uh, does the DNS, the topology you define, also come coming from a CD structure? Yes, yes, absolutely, yes. That's a very yes. Welcome. That's a fantastic question. It's a very important uh, uh, thing, and it's a it's a it's a difficult result actually. So, but you can. Um, well, it's not difficult to show that this is a CD structure. It's difficult to show that this CD structure has reasonable properties, but it does. It's uh, true, yeah. So um, it's a, well, it's something called a quasi-bounded regular and complete CD structure. So quasi-bounded is a, is a generalization of Evolsky's notion of bounded CD structure. And uh, we certainly use these properties in order to, uh, to show, for example, things like compatibility of a transfer structure with, with a shification. So that's absolutely crucial. Okay. Thanks. So there's an, another question by Remy. Why is it reasonable to take normalization rather than working directly with uh, the W0 bar? Oh, yeah, well, okay. Uh, that's actually a technical condition. So um, if your underlying scheme is not normal, uh, then the resulting uh, log structure that you put by pulling back from X is not solid. Okay, so I mean, log geometry has this uh, uh, problem of having very exotic or exoteric notations, but uh, so, and then you cannot compose. I mean, it, it, you run into trouble if you try to produce composition. So more specifically, you, uh, the morphism, uh, what I'm saying is that uh, if you have a, the, the morphism from W0 bar to Y by the composition, okay, your horizontal composition like this, okay, um, might not be an admissible morphism in the category of log schemes. But the uh, the outer arrow, so from W zero n to Y, uh, might be okay. So it's a technical condition. I mean, you don't need to be too worried about it. All right. So uh, should I continue? Uh, yes. I, yeah. I, I take it as a yes. Okay. I don't yeah, because yeah. I, I'm not seeing questions right now. Okay. Good. So um, fantastic. So now we have a category of um, spaces. We have uh, uh, topology, and then we can finally define um, what our sheaves are. So let's uh, give a name to this. So the pre sheaves over the category of log correspondences are called pre sheaves with log transfer. Okay, and thanks to the properties of, uh, of uh, dividing this Navage topology, and uh, well, we, we can prove that shification with respect to, uh, to this topology respects transfers. Okay, so I want to stress that this is actually a difficult theorem. Okay. Um, and in order to maybe explain a bit why this uh, dividing this Navish topology is quite peculiar, let me look at the representable guy. So Z log transfer of X. Okay, so this is just a unit guy. Sorry, I, not... I missed a question yeah. uh, before. So yeah, in the, yeah, pro yeah. probably in the previous page, uh, there's yes. a question where uh, is the product the FS product? The product, okay, so here, uh, when I write this product x underline times y underline, this is actually the product of the underlying schemes. Okay, so I'm not forming the product of, of log schemes here. I'm just forming the product of usual schemes. Then I, I build this w0n and I look at the resulting morphism back to x underline and I put a log structure on w0n so that the morphism, resulting morphism is strict. Okay, so I pull back a log structure on, on this normalization. Okay, so okay. We, we, can, we can maybe talk about that um, maybe later. Okay, so if you have because further questions. Yes, so. Okay, okay. Uh, right, but that, that's, at this point, it's just a product of schemes. All right, so, um, so what I was saying is that the, uh, if you look at the uh, Z log transfer of X, so the Unida guy, this is not a dividing Nisnevich uh, sheaf. Uh, you can uh, compute the, the, the Dini's sheafification of this guy and the sections over, I would say, some guy Y. And roughly speaking, uh, this is given by correspondences 
so w like in x times y such that w becomes uh, finite over x after a log blow up. So in some sense, um, the very restrictive uh, condition that I put on our correspondence is namely the fact that this uh, closure is already finite over x is uh, softened by the topology because if we simplify, then we are sort of allowing things which are not necessarily finite, but they become finite after some blow up okay, in, a, in a very controlled way. Okay, so uh, this, uh, we also have a theorem with, that allow us to compute the uh, dividing this Nevich cohomology of a sheaf, okay? And, and uh, um, it's, it's something like this. So it's a co-limit of the strict Nisnevich uh, cohomology group. So these are very often just the usual Nisnevich cohomology groups. It depends on the sheaf F, okay? But well, if F sort of comes from algebraic geometry, then this is just the usual Nisnevich, uh, essentially the usual Nisnevich cohomology. And then you have to take the co-limit over this category X smooth uh, div. So this is the category of dividing covers uh, such that the underlying scheme is also smooth. Okay, so it's a fairly uh, reasonable category. So in particular, this Y, the underlying schemes of all these Y are smooth. And this theorem, so this is actually a theorem, and this holds under two conditions. So you have a bounded below complex of Nisnevich, of dividing Nisnevich sheaves, and, um, and your scheme X to begin with is in the subcategory that we denote smooth log smooth, okay? So this means that our um, uh, schemes, log schemes such, such that the underlying scheme is smooth and the boundary is a strict normal crossing device. So this is really, these, these are really guys like X D with X smooth. Okay, so very nice, very simple uh, log smooth schemes. So, Federico, there's a question. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. um, is Dini's subcanonical on the subcategory uh, uh, LSM of K? So no. You, meaning without. No, it's not. No, no, it's, it's not subcanonical. It's not subcanonical. And that's exactly what the, the, the point of my remark one, right? So no, but the, for, for the schemes without transfers, for the site without transfers, LSM K um, or K. Okay. For uh, I okay, I don't know on the top of my head. Uh, I think is not. I can I can I can yeah I uh, I need to think a bit about this. Uh, I but I think I think it, it it's not. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let me let me continue. So at this point, we have all the ingredients that we need to um, to build our category of motives. So we start from the category. So of course, I will uh, just let me just focus on the DM side. I mean, we have also a, the DA version of the of the, of the thing. Um, all right. So we start from the category of sheaves with log transfers on log smooth schemes with respect to the dividing Nevich topology. You have a canonical functor from the old guys, so the usual sheaves with transfers on uh, on uh, smooth schemes. So this is uh, the W upper star functor, which is induced by the functor W that I introduced some slides ago uh, from smooth log schemes to usual schemes. Then you can localize uh, with respect to the P1 infinity guy, and the resulting category is what we denote log by log dm, effective Dini's k with coefficients in lambda. Okay, so it's, you have an, easily an induced functor from dm, which let's still call it w omega upper star. And uh, yeah, that's it. So that's the category of log motives I, I was promising you at the beginning of, uh, of the lecture, okay? So let me now uh, say something about the properties and, uh, and, and well, you can actually prove something with it. Good, so uh, let me list some, some of the results, okay? 
So as customary, let me denote by m of x the motive of x. Okay, so this will be the image in log dm of the representable guy. Okay, lambda transfer of x if lambda is our sheet, uh, our uh, ring of coefficients. Okay, so uh, first of all, some easy easy stuff. So the easy parts are the monoidal structure. This comes as a day convolution product as as it happens for dm from the product on on uh, log schemes. You have my Vittori squares and, uh, and you have invariance under admissible blow-ups where the admissible blow-ups are precisely this, uh, well, you, that's actually, we need to work a bit, but this, is, this, is the, this comes from the dividing covers, okay? That I introduced before. Okay, so uh, definitely less formal result is uh, two. So is the fact that the motive of X is not just invariant with respect to the guy P1 infinity, but is actually invariant with respect to Pn, uh, comma Pn minus one. So this pair, Pn, Pn minus one, is, is, a, is a log scheme in the obvious way, okay? So Pn is a smooth scheme, and then you have a Pn minus one sitting inside Pn as a hyperplane at infinity, and uh, this is a divisor, okay? So you, build, you can build a log structure out of it. And uh, yeah. Yeah, yes, question. Yes. So yes. is there a non-effective version of DM? So I guess. You can form the non-effective version by inverting uh, uh, twists. Okay, and the twist is the usual twist. So is uh, the, the whatever. So you start from uh, the motive of uh, the GM with, with, or, or, or P1 with no uh, log structure and you point uh, at one and then you get uh, lambda one and then get everything. Okay, so you get you you have a twist, and you can form the non-effective version of uh, log m just by formally inverting twist with uh, with uh, lambda one. A less formal question would be: Well, what's the relationship between this uh, non-effective version and the effective version? And in order to answer to this question, I would need to have a cancellation type result, like a Voss's cancellation, and at the moment is not available, but uh, you know, people are working on it. <laughs> Okay, so, so we'll, let's see. Uh, okay, so, um, right, so, so why is two very, I mean, particularly interesting uh, for me in this picture? Well, because, uh, you know, invariance with respect to a n in, uh, in uh, usual dm, it's, it's obvious, right? Because a n is just the nth product, oops, sorry, just n copies of a1. And uh, well, if you have motives are invariant with respect to A1, they're automatically invariant with respect to AN. But here, PN is not the n full product of uh, this, this pair, right? Of P1 comma infinity. So you actually need to work, okay? And the way you do it is by, well, of course you do, you do induction on N, and then you have to sort of cleverly uh, interpol between um, P1 times P1 and P2 using uh, dividing dividing covers, okay? So uh, I find this quite amusing. Okay, so what else do we have? So we have uh, Tom space. So, so you mean you're really using the divided Nisnevich topology? Yes, here? yeah, yeah, yeah. Here I'm really using the dividing Nisnevich topology to prove this, this result, okay? And actually uh, it's, uh, that, that, that's, that's an, another amusing, amusing fact that, um, okay, so you can, um, you could build the category without imposing uh, dividing invariance. Okay? So you can start just with Nisnevich, stick Nisnevich, uh, stick Nisnevich topology. But then instead of inverting just P1 infinity, you can invert all the Pn, Pn minus one guys. Okay, and then, and then you can ask, well, how far am I from getting my original category log dm, well, uh, essentially you're, you, you, you have it, okay? So if, in other words, if you have pn, pn minus one invariance for all n, then you can uh, show that you have dividing invariance. So you have invariance under dividing covers. And on the other hand, if you have dividing covers uh, plus um, p1 infinity invariance, then you get the invariance for pn, pn minus one. So there is a, in our paper, we put somewhere a table with the implications of a different set of axioms that you can use to build this, uh, to, to build log at the end. Okay, so uh, what else? So we have, um, so Tom space isomorphisms and uh, a, a version of Giesen sequences. 
And these are not quite as you might expect, but I don't think I have time for explaining this in, in details. I mean, I can answer two questions later. Uh, but let me first discuss the comparison with Wojewalski's category of motives, okay? So for this, I need to assume that K has resolution of singularities, okay? And the first result I can, I can offer is the following. So uh, let's, uh, let's take X and Y in log smooth over K and assume moreover that the underlying scheme of X is proper. That's really important over K. Okay. And then I can look at the harm in log dm uh, between m of y and m of x, and the same thing in dm with the open complements of a log structure, and it turns out that this is an isomorphism. Okay? As long as here you put the means, and means the topology is not irrelevant in, the, in this. Okay, so a consequence of this is that uh, you can you can study this adjunction between log dm and dm, and you can prove that this is actually a localization. So the right adjoint is fully faithful, and you can identify the essential image, so the old dm somehow, with the complexes in log dm, such that k is a1 local. So a1 local object, so a1 with trivial log structure. Okay, so A1 local objects in log dm are exactly dm. Okay, so this is if you if you want, these are strictly A1 invariant complexes. Okay. Uh, Federico, I have a quick quick question. Yeah, what yeah. Is, yes, Mark. What does it mean that the X underline is proper? What does that mean? Uh, the X underline is just a scheme. X underline means the underlying scheme oh, okay. of the of a log scheme. Ah, okay. So and then okay. it looks then like you're getting nothing really different. What's the difference then? You you so, you do because you have something like uh, you, the motive of of uh, a one for example. That's ah. not trivial. Okay, thank you. So only if you if you look at maps to something proper, then you get back uh, maps in in the end. Okay, but for example, you can look at Tom from uh, M of X to, I don't know, Omega one as, as, a, as a sheaf on the big site. And this would just give you cohomology of, of Omega one, okay? I omega see. one is not proper. Gotcha. It's like, it's not representable by a proper thing. Right, very good, thanks. Yeah, sure. But, um, but that's actually helpful, Mark, the question, because if I, what about if I, if, what if I restrict myself only to the subcategory generated by M of X, such that X underline is proper? Okay, then it's true, then you don't get anything new. The category is actually equivalent to DM. Okay, so the difference is really in the known proper stuff. Okay. So if you want, these are, these are two created by uh, M of X, where X underline is proper. So of course, this is suggesting that there is no localization in the usual sense in the category, right? Because otherwise, I mean, you know, you could generate everything by the motive of uh, smooth and proper varieties, but that's not the case, okay? And uh, so either as a A1 local gadgets or as a subcategory generated by um, motives of proper things. And I also want to stress that this is an Isnevich phenomenon, okay? So if you replace uh, the Isnevich topology, so Dini is here. If you replace the dividing Isnevich topology with uh, uh, the et al variant, then this would be false, okay? It would not be true that log dm et al proper uh, gives you back uh, dm et al. And that's sort of a useful, actually a useful thing because, because of what I'm going to say next, okay? So, but anyway, so if you, you can use this comparison and, uh, and uh, inherit from dm quite a few properties, for example, uh, a nice projective bundle formula and, and so on. But let's, uh, well, let's answer again to Mark's question. So what is the difference between log dm and dm? Okay, so for example, Let's look at the log differentials. So omega j over k 
okay? So these are the, um, the sheaf on the big site. And you can actually uh, show that these are strictly uh, P1 infinity invariant Dini's sheaves with log transfers. Um, it turns out that the transfer structure is a, is a painful part of the story uh, in, to, to, to deal with these omega i's, okay? So um, if you are in characteristic uh, zero, you can, you can use a sort of a shortcut. Uh, there is a, a work by Florence Lecomte and uh, Bach where they, well, we invert, uh, well, we work with rational coefficients and then they just put the, the, the transfer structure on the differentials, okay? So, uh, but we used a different approach and because we wanted to keep working integrally. So we followed some work by uh, Andre Casistamatiu and Kai Ruling. And, uh, well, you can work a bit and then uh, starting from their results, you can extend the transfer structures on differentials to the, to the log setting, okay? So that's technical, but you can do it. Okay, and then and then you can you can prove that uh, you have such such an isomorphism. Okay, so after is a direct consequence of this theorem, of this theorem that um, maps in log dm from the motive of x to this guy uh, gives you the cohomology of uh, of the of x underlined. So this is actually uh, you should be careful with the notation here. So this is a cohomology with the usual the risky code, Misnevich or whatever cohomology of the underlying schemes. And the log structure is completely encapsulated by the, the sheaf here, okay? So there's X, there is no underline, but here there is an underline, okay? So, so for example, for, for this something like omega X log boundary of X, something like this. That's the sheaf. Okay, so uh, can I like, I have a couple of more minutes because of my bad connection and then yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. let me comment on this, uh, we conclude this, this remark. Um, okay. So there's a question yes, yes. about uh, Daniel, Diane Grayson asks, if, what if I is negative in the theorem? I what, is, what if I is negative? Uh, what if I is negative? Uh, uh, in, in the previous page, I guess. In the previous page, uh, is or, negative. I'm not sure. Uh, or, I'm not for, sure. This is for every i. I don't, that's that's just a shift. No, no, no. A, so, a, so I, I, no? I get it wrong. It's uh, the, the other page, uh, the second one. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. So uh, the i here. Uh, I don't think there is a problem with i negative. I mean, the this thing would be zero. Okay, so let me let me just put i larger than zero to be safe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because in uh, I guess I don't no. know, but in 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 motivic homology, there, there's issues with i negative. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. It's totally no, no. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So no. He he's totally correct. So let me put a, a positive. I mean, it was hidden in this i and j larger than zero. Okay. Both are uh, bigger than zero. Okay. So both are positive. Both are non-negative. Okay, good. So, so let me let me continue here, um, and this is a, a very amusing remark for me. So uh, let's uh, let's assume that characteristic of of k is p. Okay, so is uh, is uh, right um, larger than zero, and let's look at the constant sheaf z mod p. Okay, so you have the again our Artin Schreier sequence. Uh, so zero z mod p g a g a zero. So this is actually exact for the dividing it topology on log smooth schemes over K. And uh, okay, so you can look at this guy, log dm dividing it all effective with z mod p to the r coefficients. And that's not zero, right? Because the z mod p guy is not zero. GA survives, everything survives. Okay, so for example, and home from m of x to z mod p is just the cohomology of z mod p of the underlying schemes. So H zero, huh? non zero. And uh, you can even say more because the Z mod P is actually uh, proper, right? It's just the same thing as the motive of uh, spec K if you have Z mod P coefficients. So it's actually, this guy actually lives, or P to VR version, in the subcategory generated by 
uh, smooth and proper, well, motive of, of X, such as the X underline is proper. Okay? So that so you can you see that this, then the comparison that I wrote on the previous page doesn't work in the et al set. Okay? And then, um, so you have, a, you have a, for every R, you have a category of, of uh, motives, so there is an effectiveness in here. Uh, with Z mod P to the R coefficients. It has the et al topology in it. And uh, it's a very reasonable question for me to ask whether you have some kind of uh, crystalline integral realization into something like uh, you know, D, B, C, R, Z mod P to the R, where um, no, R, you know, R is something like the Renault ring, okay? And if you invert, uh, so if you, if you speculate a bit and you imagine doing this for every R and then you pass to the limit in a suitable sense and you you get a piadic, uh, a piadic version and then inverting P, this, the, the, the target category would be something like, uh, you know, um, the derived category of complexes of uh, KEF modules whose cohomology groups are F isocrystals or something like this. So that's of course, uh, well, I know but I would like this to be true. And um, yeah, so I was planning to say a couple more things, but let me just end with uh, the to-do list. So uh, more things that we can do in this, in, this, uh, in this work. Well, there is a work in progress uh, on log SH. And again, also in progress, uh, some work on the representability of uh, Hodgebit cohomology. And then there are things which are rather question, so what is the comparison with the Milner Ramachandran category of motives, which is built using uh, etal, uh, Vodsky's et al. motivic complexes away from the characteristic, uh, so in inverting P and um, exactly the, the category of, uh, the derived category of modules over the Renault ring at P. And there is a very nice recent result by Shuji Saito uh, comparing the reciprocity sheaves with our log motives. So. That's also very interesting for me. And I, we have a, a very natural question about rigidity. So rigidity in the Susan sense. So what happens if you take Z mod N coefficients and prime to P again in the et al setting? And then of course you can, uh, you can try to be more uh, bold and try to put a log structure on the base and, uh, and then um, the dividing topology. So the fact that you are inverting blow ups, admissible blow ups, in the boundary suggesting that this uh, the resulting category would have something to do with the rigid version of DA and DN um, developed by Joseph uh, Ayub and Alberto Bezzani and so on. So, okay, so let me stop here. Okay, so let's first thank Federico for the nice talk. And so we have already some questions. So I'm, I'm starting with the, 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 uh, the uh, uh, one by the an anonymous spectator. Uh, what's the difference between log dm and da? So that's relating log dm and, and the log da. You mean log dm and da? So that's related to your point six. Yeah. So uh, okay. So I don't know if I understood the question. So you want the relationship between log dm and the usual da? Yeah. Oh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well. Um, I, ah, yeah. No, so, no, not, so, so, not uh, rigid DA, sorry. Uh, not rigid, okay. So rigid I DA is something yeah. that I would like to, uh, to, to, to understand. I mean, is a, is a reasonable, if, that's a very reasonable question to rigid DA. And, uh, and, but in order to, to be able to discuss this, we first need to develop log DM over a log point, okay? And then, and then uh, as, I, as I said, so I expect this to be, uh, expect, I expect the two categories to be related exactly because in the dividing uh, setting we are, um, well, we do something that we do in rigid geometry, right? Well, in, uh, mm. and because uh, we have a close no, relation. Yeah, so it's something very, very close, right? So, so that's a very reasonable kind of comparison. Um, but uh, the usual DA, well, I mean, you have to first compare DA with with DM, and then and then it's yeah, comparison between DM and log DM. And, yeah, so I don't know have, if, yeah. Okay, so we have many questions. I think okay. then uh, uh, Michael raised his hand, so I'll try to, sorry, I'll try to mm -hmm. give him the, the hand. Yes. Uh, 
Oh, uh, I don't see him. <laughs> ah, yeah, it, here it is. Okay, now you can talk, Mireille. Thank you. Uh, so how much uh, do your results depend on the resolution of similarities? And a lot. Some <laughs> resolution similarities? So it does depend on the resolution of singularities quite quite a lot. Okay, so, so Gabber's version uh, is not sufficient for a purpose. I mean, Gabber's version. Uh, okay, so the problem is that in, I, I really want to work with integral coefficients. Okay, so and uh, and I, so I don't want to invert p. <laughs> okay, okay and, but and if you do, uh, then, then uh, will Gabber's version help or no? If, you, if I do invert P, then, then I suspect that nothing very interesting happens. So if I invert P, for example, I suspect that the category, okay, so that's my, that's a, that's a conjecture, okay? So, um, okay, so let me, let, me con let me write this. So for example, let me use log dm and the tile setting and, uh, and, uh, and let me invert P, okay? Then, then uh, we strongly suspect that this is, or at least if I restrict to the, yeah, let's say that I more will restrict to the proper subcategory, then I strongly suspect this is just the end. Okay. So the point is that everything DM new, etal or DM? Et, etal, etal, etal. I'm working in etal, I'm, I'm etal yeah. here, okay? okay. okay? So, so, well, essentially the point is that, um, okay, so I, I, all the examples that I, I know of things which are in log dm, but not in dm, they, they are all killed by a power of p, okay? So, uh, so, so if I invert p, then, then I strongly suspect that I get back dm. So I actually, I, I, yeah. So, so that's why I don't want to invert p. But if you want, that's actually a good, a good, a good point, right? Because towards, uh, towards the comparison with uh, Milner Ramachandran categories, then this would be actually very good, right? It would mean exactly that we are, we are very close to getting a category which is built in a geometric way, and that inverting p gives you the usual motives, etal motives, and then it has it has new information exactly at p. Okay, so I'm trying to. So we have questions from many sources, so I'm trying to ask them. So there's, yeah. do the dividing topology contain Kumer log et al? If not, why not? Okay, so, um, yeah, so. okay, so, lo, lo, okay, so first, um, <laughs> okay, uh, right. So log et al, and, uh, and um, first of all, the question about log et al. So proper log et al monomorphisms are precisely the dividing covers. Okay, so log et al maps are in the, in, the, in the dividing topology. For Kumar et al, um, well, why not? Well, essentially because we have another version, which is the, the log et al version of our category. So in, our, in some sense, the Kumar story is really an et al story, okay? And so that's why you don't see this in the new dividing Miznevich construction. Um, we do have a Kumar version. Uh, you can see the discussion of this in our in our paper. Uh, the, for example, I, I formulated the conjecture of like the rigidity version of so the 0.5 here. So our log version of a Gabba's rigidity using uh, the, using the Kumar et al side. Okay, so let me specify this. So for example. The, okay, so the category of sheaves on the small Kumar et al site. Okay, K is, is the field and then K is also for Kumar. So K, K et with say Z mod N coefficients. This should be compared with uh, log dm et al, say log et al, which includes Kumar et al stuff. K, Z mod N, okay. So this will be a comparison between the small site and the big site in our setting. This is, this is not, this is a conjecture, it's not a theorem. I hope this answers to the question. And so you, you, you need finite coefficients for this conjecture? 
yeah, that's finite coefficient. So that's finite prime. That's prime two p. That's uh, n p one. Or in general, like find the coefficients prime to the characteristic of of k. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe another question. So Remy is asking: Does remark one, page one, suggest that it's more natural to work with a more general definition of correspondences? Remark one at page, page one. Uh, eleven. Eleven. Mark Sorry. one at page one. Remy, you. Eleven. To, oh, page eleven. 11. Mark one at page eleven. Here. Uh, well, yes, uh, yes and no. I mean, in some sense, the remark one tells you that you can work with a restricted, like a smaller class of maps, which is better because you have better control. And and then if you Nisnevich Shivify, then you are not losing uh, dividing Nisnevich Shivify. Sorry, then you are not uh, losing information. So uh, we okay. So but. Um, Oh, okay, all right, so, so let, me, let, let me explain this better. Um, we actually have another version of a category of correspondences in our, in our paper. Um, we call them dividing correspondences. Uh, and these are exactly uh, what Rainey was, was suggesting somehow, okay? So you start from uh, correspondences, but you don't ask the closure to be finite over X. You ask this to happen only after a, a log blow up. Uh, then you, you, you sort of build a category of motives out of, out of this, and, and we show that the resulting category is the same. So you could start from a, a more relaxed category of correspondences, and you, won't, you would not produce a different category of motives. So that's discussed also in our paper. Okay. So uh, Brian Shin is asking, is it clear which objects need to be inverted to obtain log SH? Spheres with some sort of log structure. <laughs> That's not. It's not clear. <laughs> no, it's not clear. I mean, um, yeah. I I I cannot comment too much on this. Okay. So yeah, I I I, I yeah. I will not say anything. <laughs> so Mark Mark Levin has a question. Maybe you can ask it uh, directly, Mark. If you hear me. Sure. Yes. So I wondered, I mean, a lot of this started out with trying to understand the uh, wild ramification in class field theory, say over a finite field. So do you have some kind of uniform description using uh, log DM et al? Um, okay. Uh, okay, that's a, that's, that's a very good question. Um, so I, I would say that we cannot see in, in uh, right now a bound on the ramification out of our uh, out of our category. Okay. Um, so in some sense, okay. So you have two types of objects here. Okay. So you have things like the motive of a one, and if you think about the motive of a one as being the motive of uh, p one with uh, without infinity. Okay. Then, then you are somehow allowing um, ramification without any, any restriction at infinity. And P1 comma infinity is uh, sort of uh, um, corresponds to, tame, to the tame case, as to tame ramification. So in some sense here, we see, we see only the two extremes. We, we see the tame ramification, so with the tame part, and this gives you back uh, the M in some sense. And then we, we do see the wild part, okay? So by, by for example, mapping into, into uh, uh, known proper things, but we cannot quite bound precisely the ramification at the motivic level. So let me write, okay, let me, let me write a statement, okay? So uh, here, so that's, let me write the following theorem, okay? So um, there exists a fully faithful and exact functor, let's call it log. So this is here, this is due to Shuji. Okay, it's from a category of reciprocity in his navy sheaves to sheaves with log transfers. Okay, such that a log F 
is strictly cube invariant in our setting, in our sense. Okay, and if a cohomology of any reciprocity sheet in their sense is on in log dm. So here on this side, you have the filtration. That's, a, that's sort of what we, we learn from uh, ramification theory, from uh, the theory of reciprocity sheets and so on, okay? But I, 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 don't know, I don't know what to put here. So I can, I can, uh, I can control the, the old cohomology of, of any reciprocity sheaf, okay? Uh, so for example, also of known A1 invariant stuff, that's okay. I mean, they do live in our category, that, but we cannot uh, write the, any, any finite level of ramification filtration in so here even at the moment. After, by just sort of adjusting the log structure, to take mm, okay, so that's uh, not not quite okay. So that's another thing that we are we are trying to do. So uh, the answer is no if you don't put a log structure on the base. So if you if you uh, if you insist on using k with trivial log structure, then uh, it doesn't help putting adjusting the log structure. In, uh, it doesn't help. Okay, it's just uh, the, the category is insensitive to this operation. To for example, changing replacing. A divisor with a multiple. Uh, so you don't you don't get like uh, cycles with modulus then somehow in this category or or do you? Sorry. Uh, well, no. I mean, well, that's the best. The best thing we can we can obtain is is the formula I, I wrote here. So for example, uh, you you can write so if f of x is like the okay. So for example, if you can use as f of x the sheaf the Nisnevich sheaf sending u to uh, h one et al, uh, u, q mod z, okay? That's the dual to the et al fundamental group, which has like, you know, um, no bound on the, whatever ramification, like wide ramification without any restriction at, at infinity, okay? So the cohomology of this guy is, uh, can, be, can be captured in our category, but you cannot, you cannot capture something like uh, pi one x comma d for uh, this is no 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 not this guy. Okay, thanks thanks very much. Yeah, sure. Okay. But on the other hand, if you put some uh, just just one last comment. So if you put a log structure on the base, so if you instead of using k, you look like you use something like a log point. So k and then you 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 take okay, so something like n to k and then you put a zero here. Okay. Uh, then you can you can play with a with a with, with a with a multiplicity, okay? Because you have an extra sort of piece of information that will that can help you, and that's something that we are trying to understand right now. Oh, nice. Okay, thanks. Okay, next question by Fang oh. Zujin: Is there a psychoclass map with values in the log et al co log et al Log et al what, what log, log al motivic cohomology maybe I'm not sure. Fangju, the cohomology you that you define uh, by lo your log d. Tell me, so, Fangju, so if I, I uh, reformulate correctly. So, so what I expect is that there is. Uh, so what I want to want, what I do believe it's possible to <laughs> to construct is uh, is some kind of uh, crystalline crystalline realization from the um, uh, et al version of log dm to uh, the you know, the category of coherent complexes of graded R modules, okay? Um, R, R being the Renault ring, okay? And, uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's something that has to be, <laughs> has to be written down, okay? So, so um, at the moment, I, I think that what one, okay, so we, we for example, we need to, we need to uh, complete uh, our, our theorem that is, has to be written, but the mathematics should be okay. Uh, that we can represent also cohomology of uh, Hodge Witt sheaves, not just of Hodge sheaves. And, and then if you have th things like, um, you know, is, uh, the log smooth scheme, such that the um, underlying scheme is also smooth, then, then uh, um, this, you can use log the complexes to, 
to compute uh, log crystalline cohomology, and uh, and this would be representable in our in our category. And presumably, you can promote this uh, this assignment to to a realization functor from all motives as you do in the usual way. Right? I mean, you define it on representable guys on the motive of x, and then you try to extend it. Uh, yeah, to, to, to every motivic complex. But that, this is sort of all I mean, in the air at the moment. Okay, maybe uh, Fangzu wants to add something, so maybe I'll, I'll give him a sure. right to speak. Fangzu, can you? Hello, it, it's just, I, I mean, uh, by log attack or Monty, I mean, um, the, uh, the version defined by uh, Nakayama, which, um, Ah, that 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 thing. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. Okay. So so Nakaya. Okay. Uh, well, um, I suppose yes, but I uh, but I haven't worked this out, so I don't know. So the the, okay. the answer is probably yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So next question, Shantilson ask: uh, Do we know the Sinoid algebra in this log setting? No, we don't. <laughs> So there's also <laughs> quick answer. Uh, Ola Sande ask. Uh, so he says that DM et al effective of a field with finite coefficient is isomorphic to the derived category of of Artin motives. Say, is there something analog to our log DM et al? Um, no, but uh, be my guest. You can try. <laughs> that's all. That's that's uh, that's. Uh, Sensible question. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe so many just questions. In, well, yeah, there are many questions. I I I have also some questions, but okay. <laughs> Kirsten has a has a question. Maybe she she can ask directly to you. This was related to Brian Shin's question, and I know you said you didn't know what to uh, invert, or it may, or maybe you said it wasn't obvious what to invert, but you you knew it. Um, uh, but one reason to invert things is for a T a duality. And you also have this log version of boundary. So the question is, um, uh, is there a formula like the dual of M mod its boundary being the, um, the Tom class of the negative tangent space? Oh, <laughs> that's a, uh, okay. So that, that, that's, that's a great, okay, that's a great question. So um, I don't know, but what I can offer you is, uh, is something that I prepared in case I had more time. So. Let me let me just um, move to another page, and I can at least tell you what the Tom motive in our setting is. Okay, so um, in in oh, all right. So so what we good that was one maybe, of my maybe, questions. <laughs> I, I I I I can um, maybe let me start from maybe let me let let just ignore what I wrote on the top of the of the slide and just. Let's let's look at the Gizin sequence, okay? So let's just to try to understand what the problem is, okay? So for in in DM, okay, what what you do have is that if you have something like a smooth embedding of say co-dimension C of uh, um, say Z inside X, I'm I'm here, okay? So smooth of co-dimension C, then the the cofiber of the motive of the X minus Z into X is the motive of Z uh, twist C. Uh, shift to C, right? That's a usual Gizin isomorphism, okay? So that's not true in, in log DM. We don't have such a, such a formula. So why we don't have such formula? Well, in some sense, the, the reason is because X minus Z is a, is a bad object. Because X minus Z would be, oh, okay, if we think of our gadgets as being compactifications of, of, of schemes, so this X minus Z has to be compactified in a suitable sense. Okay, so um, we need to, re in order to get a reasonable formula, we have to replace X minus Z with something which is more reasonable in our setting. So what is it? Well, that's what we, what, that's the, the answer. So is we replace X minus Z with the following guy. So we look at the, the blow up of uh, X along Z and we, turn this thing into a log scheme by adding the exceptional divisor as a log structure. So let's suppose that X and Z have trivial log structure here, right? You just put uh, X and Z inside log n, but no log structure on that, okay? Then we can just produce a new object in which 
like genuinely leaves in our category, that would be this b z x comma e. That's our and then our theorem is that the natural isomorphism in log the m is this Giesian map. Okay, so you have the motive of the the cone of this natural morphism, so from this guy to x, and this is I now equivalent to the tau motive of the normal bundle of x in of z in x, okay? which which you can define and and uh, is in some sense is the uh, it's probably what what Kirsten was uh, or something like what Kirsten was was asking about. So let me go back to this slide and look at the topological picture. So um, so you have something like a trivial bundle and then you have a zero section. And, uh, and then what we do is uh, we take the blow up of a n at zero. We, uh, we take the exceptional divisor and the log um, Betty realization would be this thing. So some s to n minus one. Then you have a natural map to a n with trivial log, with, with trivial log structure. The Betty realization would be a disk. And then the realization of our uh, tom motive for a n would be would be this thing. So a disk bundle modulo sphere bundle. Okay. So so we we do have a theory of tom spaces in this thing, and uh, it's uh, but it's it's a bit tricky. You see, right? So for example, you have something a formula like this one. Okay. So the tom motive of x times a one is like something like m x one two. Does Kirsten, is this answering in yeah, some sense great. to you? <laughs> okay. Yes, I see what you're saying. Okay, great. Uh, so, other questions? So, I, Tony Anala is, is uh, again anticipating a log SH, I think. So, he <laughs> asks, uh, what, what about algebraic K theory, not KH? Yeah, what, what, about, what about algebraic K theory? What about it? So no, is it okay. representable in in log <laughs> okay, so, okay, so um, yeah, uh, that's something that we are trying to understand. Okay, so so the the the, the real question is what is K theory for for a log scheme? Okay, so um, you you can you you can cook up a definition. Um, I this think definition the would, initial, would not give you initial, yeah, initial so, so, okay, right. So so sorry. she defined it, but. Um, and it's hard to to sort of put her definition in our setting, okay? Um, and and uh, we 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 hope okay. So we hope to be able to define reasonable uh, K theory for logarithmic schemes, and uh, um, which is maybe a bit, a bit more naive version of uh, K theory than what we all did. And, and we expect this to be representable in log SH. Okay, we are working on this right now. So we, we, had, uh, we, 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 are, we are working on it. Okay. But the, 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 the honest answer is, I don't know. Okay. But of course, it's a, it's a problem that we, I mean, somehow it's a question that we ask ourselves and we, we don't quite know what to, what to do. So... Uh, Remy has a question from Boben de Bruyne, related question to to Mark Levin's question. Do mm -hmm. the et al fundamental groups I mean, with brackets in this sense look more like ten fundamental groups or no? I mean, full et al uh, fundamental groups. No, I mean some, somehow you you get the full guy, but you don't get the uh, you don't get the verification filtration. So is uh, it's like I'm sort of back to this to this slide, okay? So here, the at least the abelian. I mean, of course, I'm talking about the abelianized version of it. Okay? So not the full et al. Like I mean, I'm talking about classical theory. So the abelian the abelian quotient of pi one. So here also I should have written abelian. Okay? Um, so this guy f of x. So the, this is an Isnevich sheaf which uh, assigns u to this guy. Um, to, to uh, H1 U Q mod Z et al. So this would be the dual. This is like pi one et al U a billion and then dual. So this is a reciprocity Nisnevich sheaf. Okay, and if you believe in Shuji Saito's theorem, then um, this guy produces 
an object in uh, in uh, in our category. So it produces a motive in our sense. Okay, and its full cohomology can be recovered as a home group in our category. Of course, this is uh, not a, not like the optimal result because you would like to be able to to control the ramification, right? So in some sense, we are really in the extreme. We, we have two extreme cases. We have the tame guy, which sort of lives already in Vygotsky's sense, in Vygotsky's world. And then we, we have the wide ramified guy, but we cannot control its ramification. So yeah, that's sort of the, the drawback. Remy, does this answer to your question? Maybe, wait, I can, oh, I give him the right to speak if he wants to. Yeah, I was probably asking something more naive, but th this is this is fine. Thanks. Okay, great. Okay, so of course there are so many questions that we can ask because <laughs> we have a classical se setting and what things. So Mikhail Bonarco is uh, is asking, uh, do you hope that to obtain some six functors formalism in this log setting? Um, I do, but before that, I need to we need to develop a theory over base. So we need to do, define D, D, say DA over, over any, uh, any log scheme. Um, that's, that's difficult. Okay? So, and it's also difficult to think about the six factor formalism because, well, for example, we don't expect to have a localization sequence, right? So, um, oh, uh, sure. Uh, many, many of the even tools, a kind yeah. of a modification of this localization. I don't, well, you need to modify it suitably. Like, for example, using the, like, I would say, using as, a, as input the Gizin, the Gizin isomorphism that I showed before. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's of course, I mean, it's a reasonable thing, uh, but, but we, 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 well, it's, it's, it has not been written down yet. Okay. And we are certainly not working on it right now. But it's, of course, I would like to have it. I would like to have a full six line to form on this in, uh, in, in this setting. For years to come, then. <laughs> Are you still then? Sorry, Fredy? sorry, yeah. Fredy. I, I, I said I for missed, years missed, to uh, come. Your... For years to come. Yeah, for years to come. Yeah, for years to come. <laughs> okay, so now maybe I can ask. So, so the, one of my questions, just one. So uh, <laughs> in, in Vyvesky's theory, there is a comparison between DM Niznevich and DM CDH over Phil mm -hmm. and uh, over for SH. So. Uh, you explained that you have some invariants on the admissible blow up, say, but mm -hmm. what about the, a, a more a more complete co comparison between Niznevich and say, I don't know, DNIS and DCDH or something like that? Yeah, so, um, so the invariance that we have in the category is, um, okay, so if you, if you allow a solution of singularities, then we have a, so the, the, cleanest, the cleanest result. And then any any um, any proper morphism which induces uh, an isomorphism on the a complement of a boundary will will uh, will induce an isomorphism on the motives. Okay. So so uh, with with or without resolution of singularities. With, with okay. So if so if K has let me write it as resolution of singularities, uh, then let's consider F from X to Y um, proper. Uh, such that, so x minus the boundary of x is isomorphic to y minus the boundary of y, then the motive of x would be isomorphic to the motive of y. Yeah, so that's exactly huh? answering so, my question. So, yeah, so uh, that's what you can, of course, this means essentially, how do you use research of singularity, right? So you, you dominate every, any such map, with, with a tower of, of blow ups along, uh, along nice centers, okay? And the centers are all contained inside the boundary, okay? And then you can further sort of dominate this, uh, this, this is actually a result of Nidiol, um, that you can sort of refine um, log blow ups, okay? Uh, uh, and then, the, yeah, and then, then sort of uh, boils down to the dividing invariance, which is built in the category. So this is true in, uh, this is true in uh, log DM, uh, Dini's. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. Um, oh. 
Yeah, and, and so at the PT, you, you don't want to use, you cannot want to uh, use the young because you don't want to invert P. <laughs> That's it. Well, I could invert P, but somehow I think it's boring. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Same, you could try to use H topology, but it seems that the result will be the same. It will destroy. Yeah, yeah exactly. It will destroy the interesting uh, P, P information. So, so, no, I mean, we are, um, yeah, somehow we are stick to, we, we have to, we have to, yeah. <laughs> Oh, another question that come to me. So you 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 do have a, a homotopy structure in, on the log DM or not yet? Yeah, um, not 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 yet. But uh, so uh, I I know that um, Alberto Merici, so uh, who was actually listening to the talk before, uh, he he's working on this. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we of course we we expect to have a homotopy homotopy structure. So probably by working out uh, sheaves with log or log sheaves with log transfer or something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, okay. So so um, we know that local objects are strictly okay. So we we definitely don't have the analog of the Vosky theorem saying that yeah. if you have a sheaf which is okay. a one invariant, then the cohomology is strictly one invariant. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to sort of work to begin with with strictly uh, p one infinity invariant sheaves. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I suppose that this is, uh, in log DM effective, this is probably the heart of the T structure, of the homotopy T structure. Mm -hmm. that's, but that's, but that's there's no obstruction for Boivetsky's theorem to be extended to that, that uh, setting. Mm. Uh, you mean uh, the Boivetsky's theorem? You mean, uh, you mean uh, the fact that F is I mean, uh, 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 P1 infinity invariants would imply uh, strictly, strictly p1 infinity invariant things like that i actually don't yeah i don't actually don't believe it okay. i actually don't believe it okay okay so i think that close the the, the, uh, the series thank you so Federico, much thank, thanks again for for thank you for the for the nice talk